Hi, this is Andrew Jones from Climate Interactive, and I'm here to share the top four coolest aspects and features in the March 2020 release of, of En-ROADS. I'd like to show you um, the before and after for some things that we've improved in the model. So the first one is that and there's now the capacity to create external graphs. And I'm going to show you how that's going to work. Um, let's say that you're making a scenario and well, actually let's make a scenario that's got to do with carbon removal. And my favorite way to show carbon removal is with this greenhouse gas net emissions by gas. And you say, well, we're going to do some carbon removal. And you say, look at the gray area right here. But you've got a huge room with 500 people looking and they're squinting their eyes looking there at that gray area. And you say, well, you can't see it here. Now our amazing development team has added this. So you can say large right graph and boom, there it is. You can see it really well. You can see all the detail really well. Um, you also, and the, the original spark for this was that one of our partners, Michael Sonnenfeld said, I'd really like to be able to show this on a, um, a much bigger screen, such as say a, uh, I'm trying to grab it here, uh, an IMAX theater, or maybe you're doing a presentation where you have multiple uh, monitors, which would be really cool. So you can imagine a setup that was more like this, where you say, okay, I've got my main monitor, and here's, we're going to make changes over here in this one, and we're going to have this external one, and this one actually is just going to show, I don't know, greenhouse gas net emissions. But over here, you could have a second monitor, so that when you make changes, and you make changes in things, you now have three graphs that you can look at. And of course, you can imagine in the same way, you could also have four or five graphs if you want to do it with others over here and add more graphs. So I think that's the coolest new thing that our amazing development team came up with. Okay, next thing. The next thing is that we changed some of the underlying math regarding how changes in energy prices drive a boost in energy efficiency efforts conservation and overall um, improvement to energy intensity. So check it out. Here's how it was before. And I'm going to reset my graph here. And as I said, this is going to really be about the cost of energy. So we're going to look over here at cost of energy. And I also said this was going to be about the uh, changes to the energy intensity of new capital, which is right here. Energy intensity of GDP, right there. Okay. It used to be that if you had, say, a really high carbon price, energy gets more expensive because there's a tax added to it, then you would get a boost to energy efficiency. You know, energy is more expensive. There's more of an incentive to buy more efficient technologies, actually to conserve and not drive as much or turn off the lights, things like that. But overall, the improvement rate of the energy intensity of new capital would go up, but it would not be sustained over time. It would be lower, but not as much. It wouldn't be sustained over a long period of time. In the new version, however, and I'm going to set up those graphs again, cost of energy. Here we are in the new version. We're going to go down to energy intensity of GDP. In the new version, what you'll see is a similar price, carbon price, that makes energy more expensive. But notice that the energy intensity of GDP improvement is sustained. It starts to bottom out as you run out of the technical potential to keep improvement, but still, it's sustained. Look in this graph on the right, before, after, before, after. So better understanding, we improve the math of the model based on the best available science. And so there is an impact there. And one thing you'll notice is that, say, we max out carbon price. 3.1 degrees, where in the new version you'll notice that we now believe actually that these impacts on reducing overall energy demand lead to an even bigger impact, so now 2.9 degrees. You might ask, if you were thinking carefully about this, well, would we see a similar impact when energy gets less expensive? 
we adopted a new technology that was super duper cheap and it spread around the world, then energy cost of energy goes down and therefore there would be a little less incentive to conserve. However, you'll notice that um, we uh, the new math does not uh, is not that different in the new version. So there's no impact on a reduction in energy and the effect on less energy efficiency efforts in the world. So that's the second of the four uh, most interesting or important changes here in the March 2020 release. The third has to do with the role of F gases in the baseline. So I'm going to show you the before version. Here's before. I'm going to redo this scenario and we're going to look and see what did we assume for F gases. That is SF6, PFCs, the HFCs that are part of the Kigali Amendment. Before, <clears throat> as an example, here's HFCs growing up to about, what is that, 1.8 gigaton CO2 equivalent per year. We've now looked more closely at SSP2 and the way that the integrated assessment models uh, capture that uh, scenario. Uh, SSP2 is one of the shared socioeconomic pathways that we calibrate against. Before, this was up to about 1.8 gigaton CO2 equivalent per year. In the new version, when we've calibrated, um, we now in the baseline are showing that not 1.8, but it's going well above 2.4. And we're going to fix this, the y-axis of this graph, but you see it's higher. So the third version is that we basically have more F gases in, in the baseline scenario. The last one is that many people have been asking about tipping points, and in particular, permafrost release of methane clathrates. So we added, uh, this is, there are many assumptions, of course, that are in the development version of the model that we have not, all we can't add everything to this interface. But enough of you asked about it. So what we've done is we've added a new, new assumption. So if you go under here, and you go under climate sensitivities, you'll now notice some new assumptions there down at the bottom. Methane emissions from biological activity, effect of temperature on methane emissions from permafrost and clathrates. That is the tipping point. That is uh, what you've been asking us about. And now you have access to those features. You can read about them here. You can learn about where we got the projections consistent with Sure Abbott et al read about them there, and what you'll see is that if they are higher, and we assume that that effect is greater, there's a threshold that matters as well, but when you increase them, you want to imagine a world where those tipping points are stronger. There's a lot of uncertainty about them, but if they're stronger, then here you go up to 4.6 in your business as usual, as opposed to back here at 4.1. So that's the fourth of the different changes. There are others that you can read about in the model release notes. Overall, we hope this was helpful. We hope you can use this model to make a huge difference out there in the world. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. Go get them.